everyone. Welcome back to episode two of the Tennis One podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Madison Golden. We've got a fun episode for you today. Obviously, the AO, Australian Open, getting ready to go for the main draw. So we're going to do a fun little draft for that. We're also going to talk a little bit about the college tennis news that kind of broke Twitter and the internet earlier this week. So we'll get into both of those topics. But now I'll pass it over to my co-host, Patrick. All right, thanks, Madison. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us on episode two here. We have a special guest with us today from Tennis Point brand manager, Nate Walroth. How you doing, Nate? I'm doing great. Appreciate you guys having me. Super excited to be on the Tennis One podcast. You guys are crushing the content game. Switching switching gears into the Australian Open uh, late night shift. You guys have, uh, I got the call from Pat. I was like, Pat, can I call you late? You're like, I, I, I'm not going to sleep. It's, it's January. I was like, all right, good. Well, I'm good in the same schedule. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's uh, that's why I'm wearing the glasses right now because uh, <laughs> Nate, Nate was like, "Let's do it at you know, like 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern time," which like you know I'm on Aussie time now, so for me that was like 4 a.m. or whatever. So <laughs> I, I was glad like when it. you were late, Nate, because it gave me an extra hour to sleep. So I'm, I'm feeling a little better <laughs> than I was earlier. That's that was one of my. Uh, I was trying to get better at that in 2023. I was trying to be always on time, and I'm I'm working towards it. It's a working goal for me. <laughs> It's, it's a right, work man. in progress. A lot going it on, is. you know, a lot going on. A lot, lot of podcasts to record, so. Yep, yep, a lot of happening. <laughs> nice. All right, well, let's uh, let's talk about the draft. The Australian Open's coming up. We could just talk about, you know, let's look at the draw, what are the interesting matchups, this and that. But instead, we thought it'd be kind of fun to do a draft where each of us picks a team of five players from the men and five from the women. We have them broken out into five categories. So top 10 players is the first category, then past champions. That could be people that have won the tournament in singles or doubles, not just singles. Third category is wild cards and qualifiers. Fourth category are players that are in the new Netflix show, which just dropped today. So if you haven't already, make sure to start binging that. I haven't seen any of the episodes yet. I'm not sure if either of you guys have seen them yet. I haven't yet. I, I'm, I'm waiting, not, savoring I'm, it. Um, it's on my to-do list is uh as well no yeah i've my boss just texted me colleen just texted me she was like if you watched it yet i was like please don't give me any spoilers don't tell me anything that happened i need to i need to watch this in my room lock myself in there and just see what's <laughs> see what's going on we got so many personalities and there's i think they hit the right the right characters i at least on paper yeah definitely Great. a lot of a lot of young young players and it's too bad they missed out on alcaraz he had a hell of a year but uh I think he's going to be, you know, shown in the second half of the show, but maybe not interviewed as in depth as some of the other players. But this is true. No, that's a bummer. Carlos missing out on AO also hurts, but yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah but then uh, and then the finally the fifth category will be the field. So any players that haven't been taken, we can pick them for our field spot. Once a player is taken, other other uh, drafters, Madison, Nate, myself, we can't take that player. So. If Nate, for example, took Nadal in top 10, Madison and myself, we could not take him in past champions. So even though he's in multiple categories, once he's taken in one, that's it. We're going to do a snake draft order. So, you know, it'll go one person, second person, third person, third person gets to draft again, back to second person to first person. And then the first person gets to draft again. So just like that. Let's uh, decide the order of the draft. Madison, I don't think you've played many tennis matches, but this is how we decide on court <laughs> who gets to serve first or, okay. or receive if they'd like to. I'm going to have Nate, the guest of honor, spin the racket here, Nate. You're going to pick M or W, all right? Give me a W. W? Give it to me. Let's you go, baby. You got the dub. Okay. I, I... Back to the day, fun fact Friday, I have never in my life picked M once ever. No, you can't. can never pick M. No, no, no. It's like picking D <laughs> on PNG. Exactly. You, you got to pick it. I mean, what are you doing? All we, right, we so. Don't talk, we don't talk about that company. <laughs> okay. I'm just okay. going. So, no, I got you. So now, Nate, we're going to say you at least have the second pick. Madison, unfortunately, you're number three. It's Nate, all right. you at least have the second pick. This is Cal- to win the first pick. I'm going to have him spin again, let you pick. <laughs> Dub all day. You pick that dub again? Look at that. Two for two, mate. Two for Dang. two. Nate gets That's the first impressive. pick in the draft. Who said it was 50-50 shot? W every time. Okay. 
Nate, do you see the, uh, you've got the the categories in front of you here? Sorry, Patrick, I have, I have one more question really quick. Oh, yeah. Can the field be someone not on that list? That's how I viewed it. So... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, The field can be any player that's okay, in cool. the Australian Open that, that didn't fall into one of these categories. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Anyone that's left. Sweet. And by the way, guys, you don't have to go in this order. So you don't have to pick your top 10 player first. You can pick past champion first. Ooh. You could pick your Netflix oh. player first. Okay. So, you okay. can kind of jump around. It's totally, who do you think other people are going to draft? Do you want to get this person out of the way? So yeah, kind of I, kind of anybody that, uh, that you're feeling. I, I don't think the first pick of the draft is going to be a uh, head scratcher for anybody. I think this is a pretty much a no-brainer. I'm going to have to take the guy that hasn't lost on this continent since 2018. I think he's up to 37 or 38 straight matches. I see you already started typing in his name. Oh, yeah. like Mr. <laughs> Novak Djokovic, the man himself coming off a title and in, in the tune-up event in Adelaide, looked sharp, took out Shapovalov, took out uh, Korda in a great final, um, took out Medvedev in straights as well. I was uh, impressed with his form and I uh, think he's just looks like he's a motivated man. Looks like he's uh, kind of refreshed after a pretty brief season last year. Looks like at 35 years old, he's got a lot in the tank. I will not be betting against the uh, nine-time Grand Slam Australian Open champion. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking good. And I think he's won, like, what is it, 34 matches in a row or something in Australia since uh, since 2018, I think, was the last time he lost there. So I think he's yeah. pushing 40. I think I think if he gets two rounds or three rounds, he'll be at 40, which is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, he's uh, – I, I think you were smart in taking that because I think anyone else – Probably would have taken him first. He, so he did look like against Medvedev, he was his something was tight with I think it was hamstring or something where he seemed to be yeah. limping a little bit. It was a little concerning, but um, did he did he play that uh, match last night against Curios for that? He did. Exhibition? He did Who play. Curios won. Uh, won. I yeah. didn't see the <laughs> second set score. I think they just played sets to four, and Curios won the first set four three. Didn't so yeah, I, I didn't see the second set. Was but. there what, what was the effort like in that match? I, they were definitely joking around, talking to the crowd, yeah. like, okay. you know, they were trying to put on a good show for sure, but there were definitely points where you, you could tell they weren't running full out or, you know, kind of just. Kyrgios was, Kyrgios was trying to put on the show. <laughs> yeah. What else is new? <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> All right. Second pick. Second pick. I think I got to take. Speaking of the man. I just want him in my corner. I just want I just want Curios on, <laughs> on the squad. I'm going with Nick. We're talking about him right now. The guy, you so know, Netflix, it's... right? Your Netflix pick. You know what? I'm gonna take him in. I'm gonna take him in past champ. So oh, I'm gonna, right. yeah, I'm gonna take him in past. So past wait, champ. Uh, one more question. So you got curious. Does, are we doing this by like? Predict, try to, are we trying to predict just who had like accumulative wins for your whole team? Yeah, sorry. So I should have explained. So okay. once we each have five players throughout the Australian Open, we are yep. going to tally. Every time your player wins a match, that's <laughs> one point. So we'll keep it okay. simple. So whichever <laughs> of the three of us has the most points at the end wins. So basically, okay. you just want a squad that cumulatively is going to give you the most okay. match wins. Okay, so, I got it. Let me uh, let me ask you, Nate. Which category did you want to take Djokovic in? Take him out of uh, take him out of past champs. Past champ. Okay, I think that's a good call because not to, not to share too much strategy, but uh, there's a <laughs> lot of good players in top ten. Whereas I think we've now covered probably the two that have the best shot in past champ. So yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Whoa! 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 We'll oh. see. I mean, that's strong, but oh. I, I feel a little, little bit of injury from the third guy that kind of looks like a, a big name there. I just, just don't know if he's a hundred percent, but we'll see. Madison, you're up third pick. Yeah. I know we, you just touched on it a little bit of an injury, but for my past champ, I'm going to go ahead and go with Rafa. I think, you know, you got it. You can't take him out. He, I think he's going to make it far. Do I think he's going to win? I don't know, but yeah. I think he's still, like we talked about last week, Patrick, he pushes through things. He wants to play. He loves Australia. People love him in Australia. 
We'll take him. Won it in 2022. He said he's excited and ready to defend the title. So I'll go ahead and go with Rafa Nadal. Yeah, it's it's a good pick. I mean, he's we, we saw him battle through injuries last year to win. I mean, it was like amazing that he was on crutches four months before the tournament. And then he, <laughs> and then right. he won. And he even came back from two sets to love against Medvedev. I mean, it's yeah. And, it, and he even drop. Sorry, go he, ahead, Nate. No, he did drop his matches in the tune-up events, uh, including his practice match against Hubie yesterday or whatever that was. But, I mean, I think you have to feel pretty optimistic with that pick, given that Rafa has said that he's, like, been able to put his on-court training, um, just like his regimen has been able to kind of sustain his uh, kind of health troubles. So mm-hmm. I think the fact that he's been able to do that, I mean, best of five is obviously a different ball game for him. He's able to take guys' legs out um, since right. 16 years old. <laughs> I mean, he did it last year when people doubted him with his foot injury. I think he also just seems optimistic that whatever they did to his foot, like it was something that um, I don't know what, what the kind of procedure was had or if it was more of a medicine thing, but he seems to be pretty confident that his foot can hold up through a uh, rigorous match. I, I would not be betting against the, uh, the greatest champion in our sport. Well said. Well said. Madison, you uh, get the you get the next pick because you had the last okay. pick. So it's only fair you get okay. to pick again. Okay. I'll take it. All right. So I'm going to go a little bit on a different path for this one. This is going to be my top 10 player, but I'm going to go with Felix OJ Aliasim. And I think that is a pretty strong pick because of how he ended 2022. He really came on strong. He proved that he can beat these top players. He is a top 10 player. Um, He's a really consistent player. He played really great at the Davis cup and world tennis league and I'm just really excited to see what he can do. I think he's going to go far, and I think the Australian Open is a good way to start his year. Yeah, one of the best yeah. plus one guys in the in the world. On a hard court, it's hard to bet against Felix in that forehand. Yeah, and he made the quarters last year. I mean, he, that, the AO kind of kick-started his year, it felt like. I mean, that, that match yeah. that he lost in the quarters was maybe the best match I ever saw him play, even though he, he ended up losing, I think, in five to Medvedev. Is that right, Nate? In the what in the Aussie? Yeah, in the Aussie. Yeah, I believe it was five sets to Medi. Yep. I think you can uh yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, and Medvedev at that time felt like the best player on hard courts in the world. I mean, he had just won the US Open right before that against yep. Djokovic yep. and kind of felt like the guy to beat. And uh and then obviously was, kind of was quiet definitely. after he lost in Dallas. There was a like. three-year stretch there that I think it was pretty undisputed that he was the best hardcore player in the world. And I think Rafa exposed him a little bit um in that yeah. Australian Open and showed that that front court game is not at an elite level yet. And I think guys kind of took a page out of that and they're not going to feed him. They're not going to feed him a steady dose of uh baselining and a little, little variety has caused him some trouble. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point too. Which is why I'm not going to take him with my pick, <laughs> <laughs> even though it would I be know, a I strong pick. Talk you out of him. Go ahead and take yeah. the Neil method though, man. It's a great player. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, it would be a good pick, you know, not a bad pick, but I, I'm not taking Medvedev. I'm really torn. I want to take a top 10 player here. There's two that I'm really eyeing. And it's a, it's got, it's a coin flip. Both are playing strong right now. You know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Sitsipas. Ooh. It was, oh gosh. It was between it was between him and Fritz. I gotta tell you guys, those two guys yeah. both playing strong. I you better just, hope Hallis, you better hope Hallis doesn't expose that backhand return. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just uh, that's true. Tough first <laughs> round, but I just uh you know, Sitsipas fought off some demons in the United Cup. I don't know if you saw his match against Chorich, who, you know, just yeah. literally saves match point after match point after match point. But I think getting over that hump, Sitsipas beat Berrettini. He's had big results in the AO before. I mean, he made the semis last year. He beat Nadal at this tournament. He beat Federer at this tournament. I mean, he's he's had some strong results over the years. And, uh, yeah, coming off with some momentum from United Cup, I think I'm going to take Sitsipas, but it was, it was I like close. I, I did think it was interesting that Novak took out Hallis 7-6-7-6, and after the match he said that he was playing like a top-10 player. Um, and then he went on to have some success in his next tune-up event. So I don't think that's a walk. Like, I think Sissi Pasta is going to have to find his form pretty quickly in this one. Yeah, and that is the only thing that scares me because we have seen Sissi Pasta <laughs> go out early at majors before. Yeah. So. We, we, we sure have. I was uh, – that was the my only time I got to experience the uh, – what is Court 2 called at um, U.S. Open? 
Um, oh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, Louis Armstrong. I got to, yeah. against Gallon. I I I had zero belief in Gallon was going to take out black the blackout city pass and the ninja looking <laughs> past me. He ripped his heart out and a bunch of fans there. I think that was a probably the shock. That was one of the shockers of that tournament for sure. Yeah. So as uh, well as I'm almost maybe regretting it, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to take another guy that went out early in the U S open in the first round. Taylor Fritz uh, went out to his buddy, Brandon Holton of five setter, but I will take the top 10 um, Taylor Fritz who has been the best American for a couple of years now. Um, just his confidence is on another level right now. He's, uh, just hitting through everybody right now. He's got the new radical out there repping it. Um, he just seems to be more stable, both mentally and just off both wings. Um, obviously, his serve has always been one of the biggest on the tour. I remember I was watching him play um, in Reno. I think it was Davis Cup last year, and he hit like 142 mile an hour serve. And I was like, he starts wow. putting this together. He's going to be a problem. I think it was the biggest serve of the year last year until – uh, learner team, the young junior American hit like 144 at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I was at that match. I, I was shocked <laughs> when I saw that. I went over to watch because he won Kalamazoo, right? Yeah, that's how he got in. I watched my Kalamazoo and I was like, I had never seen a bigger serve in forehand. I'm 16 years old in my entire life. And I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. And that is the, the raw power that that young kid possesses is incredible. Yeah, I, I was not expect. I didn't see him at Kalamazoo. I knew he won, and that's how he got in the tournament. But when I saw that on the on the radar, I was like, "Is that right? Is is this thing just kind yeah. of glitching?" But the crazy live arm for that young fella, and he's not even that tall. He's just like striking. But no, yeah, and, he, I, and he's, he's sixteen, so he's not like jacked or anything. You know, he's no. like he's pretty scrawny. So yeah, it was, but his forehand <laughs> forehand is absolutely electric, and it's just an absolute slap. Um, yeah. but yeah, you know, I think Fritz. I like the Fritz pick there. I think he's. Uh, I think after one. that. U.S. Open result. I don't think he'll be overlooking any opponents, um, but he, it seemed like he put a little pressure on himself when he saw Novak was out of the draw in the U.S. Open. He seemed like he could probably be a contender for a for a slam and mm -hmm. might have got to him a little bit. But my yeah. next, pick, I, are you I, taking him I, in top ten or Netflix? I'm taking him out of. Uh, well, that's a good question. Give me him <laughs> out of the uh, Netflix. Okay. Ah, hold on, no, no. Oh, or if you look, <laughs> hold on, that's tough. Give me him out of. Yeah, give me him on a Netflix. Okay. <laughs> That's All right, so you got, uh, you got another pick now. All right, top 10 pick for me is going to be – um. Oh, that's, that's going to be Holger Rune. It's going to be Holger Rune. Okay. Wow. All right. And, and that's out of top 10. That's the – that's the actually, Holger Rune was on the Pure Tennis Podcast at the beginning of last year when he was like 103 in the world. And I'd asked him what his goals were for 2022, and he was just like, I want three titles and I want to be top 25 and this, this, and this. And I was like, he blew his own goals out of the water. So I thought, I mean, wow, that kid is, and he's put on more muscle. He looks like he's mm -hmm. probably put on anywhere from, I don't know, six to eight pounds of muscle since last year. And he's just, his body's ready to kind of last now. He had cramping problems in the beginning of his career. He yep. seems to have kind of put those to bed. And I mean, the kid just loves tennis. He loves grinding. He loves problem solving on the court. And I think he's just been as steady as almost anybody in the world uh, the last 12 months. Yeah. Coming off that big win in uh, Paris against Djokovic in the final. That was pretty fun. Exactly. Right. I like my team. I like my team a lot right now. Yeah. It's, it's looking good. It's looking strong. So just, just to recap right now, Nate has Djokovic in past champ, Fritz in Netflix and Runa in top 10. I've got curious past champ, Sitsipas top 10. Madison has Nadal past champ, Felix, Ajay Ali seen top 10. So I have a pick. I am going with, I'm going with Tiafo. I got to have an American on the team <laughs> and I'm taking him in Netflix. I mean, obviously coming off a big run at the U S open, which to do that, I mean, you just said it, it got the Fritz, right. Trying to, trying to do well at your home slam. And, uh, and Tiafo was able to do that. I think that showed a lot about his mental side. And uh, and then he also had some some really strong play in the United Cup just uh, th these past two weeks. So, I, I after not taking Fritz, I gotta I gotta pick one American. And uh, yep. Tiafo feels very strong right now. So I'm uh, I'm going with him in in Netflix. Madison. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, I'm also going to pick an American, but I'm going to go in the wild card category. Wild card qualifying category. 
I'm going to go with Chris Eubanks because Ooh. I Ooh. got the opportunity to see him play at the San Diego Open. And he is a fun player to watch. He has a really strong serve. He just plays overall really consistent. And he also was really calm on the court. Like, and he's also, I, I know a lot of tennis players are tall, but he's so tall. Oh yeah. Like, but he makes it, I don't know. He just plays kind of effortlessly. So I'm picking him. I think he has a good shot. I, I, I like, I like my odds with that one. I think he could, he has potential to go far in the yeah. Australian open. I, th- I think he's, I think he's got some, he's got some talent. I'm ready. He's playing strong, huh, Nate? I feel like, I mean, this he's he's at his best he's ever been, really. So, Definitely. I think I think this is – is this his first Aussie Open that he's qualified for? I need to look that up because he's been on a tour for a while, but but he hasn't, yeah, uh, yeah quite been ranked high enough in, in many cases. So Another former college tennis player, a Georgia Tech yep. blue, uh, Jackets, Yellow Jackets uh, grad, I believe. So he's – Yes, sir. Another – it's cool to see these college guys have success on the tour. There's been a lot of them coming up the ranks. Um, no, Eubanks is obviously a big server. He's, that's where he's he's able to attack early in the point. Uh, he really fell off the crowd at the U.S. Open. It was fun to watch him on court 17. Yeah, I was at that match. Yeah, I was. I, I spotted you early on in that match. I saw you. I saw you locked in getting some clips for the, T, the T1 uh, social <laughs> channel. That's right. All always, over the place. always on the grind. <laughs> <laughs> the grind never stops. No, it does not. <laughs> Madison, you got another pick. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and pick my Netflix one because I feel like if I don't do this, it's going to be taken. I'm going to go with Casper Rude. Okay. I feel like Casper, you know, making two finals last year at the Slams. He's he's a really consistent player. I really enjoy watching him play. I like him off the court. I know there's mixed feelings about him, but I think he's really, you know, polished and poised. And I think that he plays that well and, and he always – speaks so highly of his opponents like at the u.s open he just he just speaks with such grace and i really have a lot of respect for him and i also like the way that he plays like i said i don't think he gets super i mean obviously i've seen him get heated at times but i feel like he overall is a really consistent player and maybe not some of the results that he wanted at the end of last year but i think that he had a lot of good in the mix as well and i'm Mm -hmm. excited to see what he can do and i think ao is a good good chance for him to kind of get get his ear off right yeah, I think I, mean, I caught Casper at, at a bad time in Cincinnati uh, after he took a shellac from Ben Shelton, the one and one loss. Yeah. I guess that wasn't. The, I guess that wasn't the best time to approach him about doing some content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would have been tough. That was. Uh, I think that was not. a six three six three <laughs> loss. And, uh, but like, he's sitting by himself, just like hitting balls on a, on a court with no fans watching. Him. I'm like, you know what? I'll just shoot my shot. You know, I can't. But I mean, I guess yeah. He was. He he was not. I heard he's a very nice person, and he's just like he is. He's like, he is really nice. Yeah, no, I, I'm I, I'm kidding. I think I'd be pretty salty too if I just got out <laughs> by a guy yeah. one and one. He, no, he was Cass- salty Cass- because he he went on a tear at the U.S. Open, so he was uh, he was like, I'm, "That's not happening again." Out for redemption. Shelton dropped only like eight service points the entire match, and that that was yeah. ridiculous. I watched the whole match. It was it was like dominating. You know, I mean, coming off uh, Atlanta where Shelton yep. just had his first pro win against, I believe, Romanathon, and then almost beat Isner. I mean, it went to a third set tie break. Uh-huh. Had, had his chances, but, uh, yeah, experience won out there, and plus Isner's won that tournament like a million times. So, <laughs> is there, so. Isn't, that, that is the Isner tournament. I don't even know yeah. if it's called Atlanta. No, exactly. The Isner Open. It's it's not The, the Isner Open, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, so I have two categories left, either wild card qualifier or the field, and I'm going to pick – a player from the field that is not listed anywhere on this board right now. I'm going Yannick Sinner. Oh, I, I mean, obviously everybody talks about that match against Alcaraz, you know, the guy's a great player. I honestly, with coach Cahill behind him, that's where I'm like, yo, everybody, the coach Cahill, Darren Cahill coaches does well. Simona Halep wins multiple slams with him after being on the tour for a long time and not winning any. And then mm-hmm. he coached uh, Anisimova last year, right? And yep. she went on a run at the Australian Open to start the year. I just yep. sent her so good. And with Cahill behind him, I, I got I to gotta pick him. There was there was one other player that I was uh, maybe could have been I, my field I, pick. I but... the next factor in that camp. Um, I think center needs a little bit more juice and a little more uh, just to consistently bring that fire. And I think he'll do mm-hmm. that under Cahill. I think he'll like you can just – 
I think that's why I love listening. I think he's probably my favorite broadcaster in the game. Oh yeah. Just, he just, he's so knowledgeable. Um, one of the nuggets I thought he was probably my favorite nugget last year that he dropped was that he said that Nick Curious is the only player to his knowledge that uses a racket off the shelf, doesn't have any specs uh, yeah. for his, wow. for his own. and I'm like, dude, Cahill is just, Brad Gilbert's up there, but I think Cahill yeah. just, his knowledge and his ability to uh, kind of just convey what players are trying to do, point in and point out is, uh, is, is up there with the best. Yeah. He's definitely, he's definitely an expert. I think he's so. pretty, pretty well to a, to being a coach. I might as well just yeah. put Cahill's name on my list. Sinner slash Cahill. <laughs> I'm putting it down. I hope, I hope they gave some of like the tennis personalities like Cahill and Brad Gilbert. I know they gave Roddick some, some airtime, but I hope they gave some of the guys like that some, some airtime on this Netflix doc. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. It'll be interesting if, uh, obviously they're not listed at any of the articles, but, uh, right now you got it. You got to think maybe they're somewhere in there, especially for, uh, some of these players. Um, I'm looking at the Netflix sure. list now. We know Curios's coach isn't going to be in it. Um, <laughs> she's, I think she is in it. I think she's going to be a star of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He is. The, that was so <laughs> funny when he said, like, honestly, I should be nominated for coach of the year. <laughs> like, that was great. How is he not, you know? Oh, no, he's – Curious's IQ is ridiculous. I mean, I remember Taylor Fritz talking about how they were on the practice courts and how he said, like, just – talking to Nick about tennis and how he thinks about the game and how he kind of sees things. He said, like, that's the thing he respects most about Nick is like, people don't understand that this guy is like a savant. Like he knows the game inside and out. And I would love to hear curious, like live commentate another, like whether it was like a next gen finals Ooh. match or where he actually gives his kind of unfiltered thoughts. Cause I think people would kind of put a, it would put a new respect to kind of his love for the game is he puts off that, that uh, vibe of like, he doesn't really care, but I mean, you at that level and to, to go to the Wimbledon final, you have to care. He cares. Right. Yeah, he definitely he does. cares. It was maybe just a defense mechanism acting like he didn't care. Yeah. But, uh, Put now, on a especially facade, in the last but... year, yeah, when he's like really going for it and like you can tell how hard he's working now, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just bummed that he's really, I mean, like, I hope he wins a slam and I think that's what he's what working hard for. But I'm like, I almost don't want him to win one this year because I, I don't want to stop watching him play. Yeah. You know what he said he, last or last night during that exhibition? He said that if he wins a slam, he's done. He's done. Yeah. Retiring. He's been saying that for a while now. And it's like, so, I, I mean, I guess it's like, it's a, it's a way to motivate himself because he, he seems to be pretty set on that. But I'm like, I just would keep rooting for him to get to the final and then maybe not <laughs> winning because I I would miss watching Curious. Yeah. And I think he's good for the sport. I think he brings something different. I really do. There's like, no doubt. People, I mean, he, He's huge for the sport. He's amazing. Non-tennis fans know who he is. So that says yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, if you show your friends a picture of 10 players that are not the big three, I mean, the the chances of them, like, they're going to probably know Curious. Like, they're not going to know many of the other players, but casual fans gravitate towards that more polarizing, fun personality that engages the crowd and is a showman. And, I mean, I think that that debate of him being bad for the sport, I mean, people were saying that a little bit ago, and it's like he's brought – plenty of attention good or bad it's been both during t- different times of his career but i mean we'll take all of the casuals that we can get in this game yeah. and viewership exactly 100 so. percent. uh nate you've got your fourth pick give me my uh field pick and give me sebastian corda dang it all you right. took mine yeah <laughs> I, I had him on my on my field list too <laughs> what what he did to center and Adelaide, or yeah, I believe it was Adelaide. I was very impressed with that match, and I just think he had match points against Djokovic as well. I think he's just in form. He seems to have he seems to have turned a corner. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended twenty twenty three as the top ranked American. Yeah, I mean his game's so clean, and yeah, he had a match point against Djokovic. It was Actually, right there. It wasn't on his serve, but yeah, still, I don't see just... Fritz dropping outside the top ten. So I mean, it's going to be tough for Corner to do it, but I at least think he'll be top. 15 i'll say yeah yeah he is uh he's looking strong so that was uh every time i make a pick i'm like nate has the other guy that i thought about taking and i'm like we'll see how it plays out yeah you're up again you got your last pick here oh so you have to take a wild card i got the wild card all right it's i know it's between i'm gonna go with uh I'm not going to pick him, but Vukic has been very impressive. Another college guy up from Illinois has been on fire. Yeah. I'm not ILL. qualifying. You said what? I said ILL. I'm, a, I'm an yep. Illinois fan, so oh, that's the there, – uh... there you go. <laughs> yep, I forget. Yep. I'll take 
I'll take – oh, it's tough. Give me Dominic Team. I know Oof. he's got a tough match in round one against Rublev, but I was not impressed with what Rublev showed against Kakanakis. I thought he looked still very one-dimensional. Um, if he can't – if he's not hitting through people, he just – there's not a lot of things he can kind of rely on as, a, as plan B. Uh, he doesn't have the variety with, like, changing the pace of the ball, whether it's sl- more slicing, attacking with a serve and volley, or kind of changing return positions and – taking time away from these big servers or grinders. And I think if team starts to find his flow and get his confidence back, he's been really trusting his game and he's climbed back inside the top 100 for the first time since his injury and uh, team's hungry. And I, I obviously Rublev is too. And I just think that sliced backhand from team to kind of neutralize the point after Rublev gets on the attack is, is going to be a little bit challenging. I'm going to obviously need that first round win right there, but I'll take team. I know there's another, Ozzy that another another Ozzy that was uh playing pretty well down there, but I'll I'll ride with the former US Open champ. And that's who I'm taking is the Ozzy that was uh was doing pretty well <laughs> recently. And that's I assume you're talking about Alexi Poprin. Sure is the yeah. uh the new FX Dunlop right there. Yeah, that's who uh okay. I was I was pulling up the draw here just to double check he's not playing anybody like too crazy. But yeah, I'm taking Alexi Poprin for my wild card. Like you said, he was he was playing pretty well down in uh, Adelaide, I believe it was, and uh, took looks out like Felix. he is. Say Big it again. Time. He took out Felix in a really good match. That was a legend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and you know, he's Aussie. Like I, I think that I don't know. I've never been to Roland Garros, but man, the Aussie fans are really rude for their own down there. And uh, so I, I think that's going to help him. And he's playing strong and he's playing the number one seventeen player in the world in the first round. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking Poprin. Who does he, he have first round? He has, uh, his last name is spelled T-S-E-N-G, uh, Sang. Sang, yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Uh, that's... Who's, who's from China to pay. Yep. So. Yep. I heard him from the US Open. I'm pretty sure. I think he was. I think he had. He was in the US Open. I think he won. A, or he almost won around. Yeah. So I like, you know, I mean, not that Popperin's ranked that much higher. Popperin's only ranked like four spots ahead of him, but obviously playing well beyond where he's ranked. So he's got the game to be a top fifty player for sure, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been he's, he's been around watch. for a while. It just hasn't. Uh... He's got the size. He's got the move. He's, he can. He's got the move. He can move pretty well for how big he is. He's got some weapons. Um, Yeah. He's just, he just never has been able to put it all together and kind of have that run to kind of keep him steady and consistent, kind of competing throughout a whole calendar year, it seems like, but definitely can, he could, he could, I could see him reeling off a win or two. Yep. All right, Madison, last pick. You have to pick somebody from the field. Yeah. Anyone that's left. I'm going to go ahead and go with Cam Norrie. I think that's a pretty solid pick. He's been playing really well. Um, at the ASB Classic, he beat Rafa twice at the United Cup. Fritz once. I, I feel really good about that. I think he's a consistent, another consistent player. I feel like my team's kind of about about consistency. I feel like if you look yeah. at that, they're, that's a pretty good group. Might yeah. not be your standard like top of the line like you guys have in the mix of yours, but I feel confident that my guys are capable of going far in the Australian Open, getting me those points. So you we're gonna go four, with Cam or top. 12 players i think you're sitting pretty though. yeah oh, i yeah. think that i'm it's a good team I, like i said i feel confident in my picks I it's funny good. the the field players i had written down the three people that i wanted to pick just depending who was left i, I had sinner corda and nori as my three <laughs> no and uh and that's Look who that. that's who each of us took in the field so we're uh i think we're on the same page here we promised we didn't talk about this before the before the show <laughs> we really yes. didn't we didn't we the did thing not. about nori though is nori's in the finals of this event and it's like that's just asking yourself from a physical standpoint a lot to turn around that That's quickly, true. get back at it. Uh, I mean, Cam's fitness is obviously next level. I mean, he's one of the best, most fit athletes out there, but it's just like a quick turnaround. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's like, I, we'll see. I mean, maybe it won't affect him. I was, that's why I was, I wasn't mad about some of the other guys that kind of lost earlier, like in those t- tune-up events, but uh, Cam just doesn't know how to not compete. He's going to put it out there every time. Hundred percent, and he's point. he's playing yeah. a wild card first round. Luca Van Ash from no, he'll be France. Fine. So I just yeah, I think his could feel a little bit heavy, and that I think he even gets to the second second week. But I think his legs could be feeling a little heavy. Yeah, could be feeling it. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. No, but all, all good I, I picks. Pick I think him, and... I was I was gonna pick him, but I, I kind of felt that he. 
I was like, at some point he's, but maybe not. These guys are freak athletes. And I guess that's why I'm sitting here and they're on the court. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good a, point. That's a good point Nate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have our teams. Let me just recap them for you guys. One more time. Nate in past champ has Djokovic. Netflix has Fritz top 10 Runa field Corda and wildcard team. I have Kyrgios and past champ. Sitsipas top 10, Tiafo Netflix, Sinner and Cahill in the field, and Popper in wildcard. And then Madison has Nadal past champ, Felix Ajay Aliasim top 10, Chris Eubanks wildcard, Casper Rude Netflix, and Cam Nori in the field. So it's, uh, yeah, I think those are three, three pretty, you know, pretty balanced teams there. So, it, uh, so what, we'll see how what, it goes. What, Winner of this gets uh, what free dinner at Indian Wells or Miami Open? <laughs> Oof, let's see. Oh. Well, we I, let's let's go let's go Miami because we Miami? know for sure we're going to be at Miami. I mean, ninety five percent chance we're going to be Indian Wells too, but for sure we'll be at Miami. So let's say that. And if Nate loses fifty dollar <laughs> tennis point gift card for Madison and myself, actually let's make it a hundred so that we can oh. buy some shoes. <laughs> Yeah, there's new there's new that Adidas Cybersonic good. market. You, you're gonna need it. There's 185 price point, but those things are those things are the real deal. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing better than getting a gift card and instead of buying something that falls within the price range, you're like, you know what? I'll just use it to get half <laughs> off something that's like insanely expensive. That's that's, that's how truth. it works. <laughs> deal. Okay. okay, we're moving on to the women. Fresh board here. Anybody Love can be it. picked. Let's see. So let's just go in. Let's go reverse order this time. So Madison picked last in the first Sweet. draft for the men. So we're going to go Madison first, then myself, then Nate. So Madison, we got. Okay. I'm trying to decide which category I want to go with first. Let's go ahead. We'll start with the top 10. I'm going to go with Ans Jabor. I'm a big, you guys listened last week. You heard me talk about her. I'm a big Ons fan. I really, really want to see her do well and go far just because not only is she an incredible player, a great person, but I think she had a really, really great year last year. And she was, she made the Wimby final. She made USO final. Really excited to see what she could do. Um, I mean, she's played, she really had a strong finish, you know, maybe not what she wanted the WTA finals, but I think that she's a player to watch and I feel confident with that pick. It's a good pick I think for she, sure. She's going to be a star of the show, I think, too. I think she has a big personality and I think it's going to match up with the uh, the Netflix documentary. We're just giving a lot of juice. She's She seems to be like the most liked person in the locker room. I just feel like she really right. is. She, people just love her. And she has a, quite the fan base, you know? She she's had, got... When I saw her at MSBC, she had, you know, this whole section of fans with a Tunisian flag. And it was yep. so cool that's because cool. that's, I mean, that's, it was just great to see. She, she generates a lot of fandom. So she's love her. probably, a, in my opinion, she might be the most talented woman in the world with a racket in her hands. Her stick skills are ridiculous. If you guys haven't seen her 360 pickup volley that she had last year, that was one of my favorite shots of the year. <laughs> what she can do with the racket, it's like an extension of her hand. I don't know how she does it with the pro staff as stiff as that thing is, but she pulls it off. Pro staff, what a great stick. <laughs> I, knew I knew you were going to say that. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. That, that, that new colorway, that gold colorway, man. I don't know about this new colorway, though. Yeah, the color shifting paint. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's. Um, I haven't seen the pro staff in person yet, so I, I can't. I can't form a judgment. I got this one right here, the one that I was spinning earlier. This is a. This is a pro staff prototype, the 2014 RF 97 that came out with, when he first switched to the 97 square inch. That's what this is. Wow, that's so. a that's the plank itself right there. That's right, man. That's it. <laughs> I, I have it here because I'm waiting to frame it with my with my signed. No, a pro, it's probably the most legendary stick in our sport, but. I oh, always yeah. get people I'm not use it because I feel like my elbow is going to fall off when I use it. Yeah, it's it's definitely an old school stick and uh, yeah, not the easiest, but most people that use it probably shouldn't. But that's that's another topic for another day, maybe. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to laugh. Oh, go ahead. I laugh at some of the people that are like, I've literally told them to go another route and they walk out the pro stuff. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> right, man. Too, too many <laughs> legends, too many Grand Slam titles with that stick. So people just. True. Oh. 
Okay. I Nate got Nate got the uh well really the he's not number one in the world, but he probably should be in the first in the first uh pick. I'm taking Sviantek. You know, she just lost to Pagula two and two, but her her losses are few and far between. And uh she did well at this tournament last year. Uh, I think she got to the semis and lost. That was before, you know, Barty retired and and Iga went on this insane tear. I, I just read her article in the Players Tribune. It seems like she's she's kind of in a good place right now. And uh, yeah, I, I just think I, I want to have the world number one on my team. I think it's really a no brainer. So <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. That's that's one I have no uh, no qualms. I yeah. think that's Fontek has been as steady as they come, and I think she's probably the best athlete on the tour. The question is, do I want her in Netflix or top ten? I think. I want to take her in Netflix. Okay. All right. For my picks, I'll take out of Netflix. Give me, give me Sabalenka. Yep. Coming coming off a title. I feel like she's found her. Hopefully, the second serve troubles and woes are in the past. Um, I'll take. I feel pretty good about that pick, though. Big forehand. A good pick. Through, I feel like she can hit through almost anybody on her on her best day. And then out of the top ten, I will take Caroline Garcia. Mm-hmm. Really want to take JPEG there. I just not picking JPEG kind of hurts me. Actually, yeah. can I rebuttal that? I'm taking JPEG. I, <laughs> I, 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 I got to go with JPEG. Yeah, I, I, I need the American on my team. I, after watching the United Cup. Just seeing that she's coming in with, to this season with some fire and then taking out Shrontek, I, I, she's I so think. good. She's so fun to watch. Yeah, one of the one of the cleanest ball strikers on the tour. She just, yeah, no, yeah. it's a good pick. Yeah, I, just, I mean, and I mean, she's I, bringing beer into the press conferences. She does that all the time. She's just like the coolest, legend. isn't she? It, legendary, and I think people like I know people. Everybody knows that her probably her dad owns the Bills and stuff. But it's like I think that the fact that she is able to put herself through this gr- grind where like. It's just it says something about her. She loves the game so much, and she just puts herself like at every event. It seems like I don't know. I just think that's pretty cool. That like she she plays for the love of the game. Obviously, she comes from a wealthy background, but it's like she does not like you would never know how she plays the game and how she right. competes point in and point out. She puts it all out there. So I, I respect money her. money can't buy you a spot into the top ten. You got to do that no, on your not. own. Doesn't matter. That's the, the thing. Yeah. No, you got to go to the crowd. Yeah, she. uh yeah, she, she's such a hard worker. And, you know, honestly, coming off, I mean, I've, the DeMar Hamlin thing, big, big deal for for yeah. Bills fans and obviously for her family. And uh, she comes out and beats Sviantek like two and two after that happened. So, yeah, I think, I don't know, perspective or whatever, but she's, she's feeling a little inspired. And, uh, yeah, no brainer. Yeah. I, I, I would have taken her as well. I think that that was who I was going to take, actually. <laughs> I felt, I felt that. That's why I couldn't let you have her. I got to. Yeah. It. Uh, so instead, I'm picking Coco Golf. Yeah, that's I, I think that Golf. I'm taking her in top ten. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take her in top ten. She's just such a good athlete, man. She's such a good athlete. When you watch her, just like holy smokes, and and so still so young. Uh, and then what she made the Roland Garros final last year, and you know, I just. Uh, I, I I like her coming into this new season and yeah. I, Who, who's a better athlete, golf or Svantec? Who? It's a tough question. It's a good question. I I mean, just sitting there courtside, golf is the one to me that like stands out the most. You just watch it like holy smokes. I think that I don't know. Maybe Ega is better at like improvising, you know, and and kind of coming up with like good looking shots from anywhere. But, Ega's flexibility and ability to slide in both corners. I, I know yeah. Coco slide a little bit too, but I mean, Ega, the way she moves is just, I mean, and then that around the net post shot she hit when she was playing doubles with Yubi, it's just like, yeah. how many how many people can hit that shot in the world? It's not many. Yeah. Got, I, I think those are my two, from an athletic standpoint, those are the two ones that I'm like, I have to, I have to watch. They're, they're, they're must watch TV for me. Yeah. Well, guess what? The good news for me is I got them both, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> This is rigged. Love it. (laughs) Rigged. All right, Madison, you're up. Second pick. All right. uh, Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pick from the Netflix category, and I'm going to go with Paula Bedosa. 
All right. I just, for one reason and one, just kidding, but the pickle juice thing is really <laughs> like that blew my mind that she just, after the pickle juice that she drank, I don't know what it did to her, but she just came out like freaking on fire and yeah. she plays, she kind of plays on fire a lot. I just feel like she's a pretty fire power hitter. She obviously has a really strong serve. She's She's got a lot of power. I, I really like her. I feel I feel good about that pick for Netflix. Madison, you should, you should try the pickle juice solution yourself and let us know how it works. I'm not a, I don't like pickles. I think that if I, so I would, that would not be my thing, but it clearly works for her. So maybe I would just have to hold my nose if I'm ever down, down that bad in a situation and try it out. <laughs> see if it brings me back to life. I can't wait to see if she has it on the court during the AO. Is she just going to keep going with it? Gotta they better her team yeah her team better have like pickle ju pickle juice jars ready to go for her i think i hope to get i hope to get a bag check in with her this year we'll, we'll find out <laughs> still carrying <laughs> it oh here's an expired jar of pickle juice i didn't mean to get rid of that <laughs> oh man all right madison you have the third pick too okay um we'll go ahead and go in the past champ category i'm gonna go with elise mertens all right. i really like elise she is a player that I've had the pleasure of watching play both singles and doubles and another really consistent player. She obviously is a stellar doubles player. I think she's like number, maybe number four or five for doubles. Uh, but I think that translates pretty well into her singles game. I like her a lot. I like the way that she plays and she's, she's another one that's super calm on court. Doesn't really get too fired up or too flustered keeps it consistent. So I'm going to go with Elise for the past champs category. Madison carrying on the consistency theme. That yep. That is, yeah. I think that's my favorite word. <laughs> that's your theme for this, for this draft here. Yeah. On both men's and women's side. You, you better know? grab a dark horse. That's right. <laughs> I do. All right. I got, I got a pick here in the field. I'm making my field pick. I'm going with the 2022 Australian open runner up Danielle Collins. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good one. She is such a good competitor. You know, I mean, the, everyone's favorite word with her is fiery, and she is yeah. fiery. But man, she is. But I, I want to know who's a better competitor than Danielle Collins on the women's side. She's just, man, when you watch her, so intense and just like, yeah, doesn't play as many tournaments as, as the rest of the players. But when she does play, she does pretty well. So she's got some Gator and Cavalier blood in her. That's, you don't want to go against those. Those are two big time programs right there. That's right. That's right. And she won the she won the NCAA singles, right? So twice. Yeah. Twice. So I'm taking her. I like it. Um I, I like it too. What it's do I need? One. I need I just got I have a Netflix. I took a Netflix and I took top ten. All right. For past champion, I will take it's between Ezarenka and Krachikova. I'll take I'll take Victoria Azarenka. I'll, I'll take Victoria Azarenka. Wow. You're clicking back and forth. That's got me thinking even more. <laughs> I, I'll take I'll take Vika. I'll take Vika Azarenka. I think she's played very well. Gruskin was hyping her up to me the other day. I hope I hope I can trust my man because he was he thinks she's a contender. So I'll, I'll take yeah. Azarenka on this. She's one. won twice, right? I mean, she's won the yes. twice. I think. I believe I believe you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then back in that pick up, I will take. Um, <sighs> That's tough. Give me mm, out of the field. I'm going to go with field and I'm going to take this one. Out of, I want a sleeper. I want someone to sleep. Hold on. Let me get back. <laughs> and look at the he's, draw real quick. He's consulting I need to look the draw, at, folks. I need to look at the draw very quickly. All right. Give me. I don't. All right. Give me Pet. Oh, Benchich or Kavito. Give me. Give me Benchich. Give me Belinda Benchich. All right. Field. I'll take Belinda Bench this year. The uh the gold medal the, gold medal winner from medal, Switzerland. Yep. She's, playing, she's playing well. I she I don't even think she lost. I think she just pulled out of the last event trying to get or yeah. That's what happened. You named the other one I would have taken, which was Kavitova. That was that was number two on my field list. But uh I guess I, I like can't. the big ball strike team, Kavitova. Yeah. I guess I have to take either a wild card qualifier or past champ. Yeah. Okay. So past champ, Chris Chikuba. Give me the uh, what she won. She won the French Open 
was that 2021 she won the French? Yeah. Yeah. I believe yeah. That. Yep. yeah. 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 She plays singles and doubles and is great in both. Just, yeah, all around. Solid tennis yep. player. And from the remaining players in past champ, I think she has the best chance to to go ahead and singles. Kennan, Kennan actually looking a lot better as of late. You know, she was coming back from that injury, kind of a rough start back in, but you know, she has won the tournament uh just yep. a few years ago. So crazy. Back no, I, I like the critique of a pitch, the critique of a pick. I uh it turns out that doubles, I think, does help your singles game. I think you've seen that yeah. with Coco, that with Katie McNally, you've seen that with um, yeah, uh, there's like Mer- Mer- Mertens. There's a lot of them that are having like it, it. It does. It helps your return. It helps serve. It helps volleys. And I think finishing points in the front court, especially on a hard court, is necessary. I mean, unless you, yeah. So I do like that pick. Yeah. Does that does that put me in for my final? Or do I have two more picks? Uh, you have you have one more pick, but it's up pick. to Madison's up right now for her. Okay. Uh, she has her last two picks. So question, if there's someone left in like the top 10, can I make that a field pick or does it have to be yeah. someone who's not listed on the no, sheet at all? It could be anybody. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead with Maddie Keys. Right. She was a really crucial player in the United Cup. I really like her style of game. She's a little bit more fiery. I mean, yeah. It's I don't want to. Yeah, she's a she's a big one. She's played really well. I felt like I needed at least one American on my team and I feel confident in her and I like the way that she's been playing. And I think she also had a really great year. Um, just kind of what she was able to do. Some of the opponents that she beat was pretty impressive. So I'm going to go with Maddie keys. Yeah. Good I, like pick. I mean, she's, she's made the uh, finals of a slam before the U S open. Yeah. Maybe 17, I think it was against Sloan. So yeah, had a couple of years off where she, you know, I don't know if it was injuries or or whatever, but she's definitely back playing where she's she, back. Where she should. So, yeah, she should be a top 10 player. I mean, that, that is very, she, she proved that last year. So I'm excited to see how she does at the AO. Yeah. All right. You've got your last pick here, which it has to be from past jam. Oh no. Wild, wild card. Oh no. Sorry. Yeah. You got Mertens. What am I saying? Yeah. Wild card. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to go with another, another American. And we've talked a lot about singles and doubles. I'm going to go with Taylor Townsend. Okay. I really, really like how she plays. I got to see her play at the Mubadala Silicon Valley Classic and she was a qualifier and she made it. I think she made, might've even made it to the third round maybe. And there were some really good players at that tournament this year, that WTA 500 event. I mean, she's a good player. Her and Katie McNally made it to the US Open finals. Their first year or their first tournament as a doubles partnership, first or second. Um, and they were quite impressive to watch. And they I'm were excited- supposed to win. I know. I really thought that they were going to win it. They lost to Krachikova and Samson, or uh, uh, who did they lose to? Krachikova and her partner. Yeah. Samsonova? No. Uh, was, yeah, I forget who it was. But yes, that's who they lost to. But they, they yeah. were really dominant the first set. And they were. I, and I think, did it go to a tie break maybe? The set? Yeah. I should just pull it up. I believe it but, did. And I think they had chances to close it out in the second. And I, They did. I think, yeah, I remember that. I was watching that match. I was I was bummed, but I like that pick. She's Taylor Townsend's back. Off off having a she had, yeah, a baby. she had a baby. Yeah. Last Crazy. year was her first full year back, or maybe even like just the second part of the season was. But yeah, she's she's fun to watch. I'm excited to see what she can do. I like it. Definitely. I'll, I at got, my last I pick, got one more. No, you're up. Yeah, hey, I'm up. <laughs> I, you, you better got, not you take the my first pick on the board. <laughs> What, like, let's are see. Are we, a... Oh, we're picking in the same category too. Yeah, no. Oh, I, 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 know one. Oof, I, I know who I'm picking, but I oh, I hope it's who Nate was going to pick. Don't I'm do taking it. The, the 2017 <laughs> Australian Open semifinalist Coco Vandaway. She is. All right. A, all right. She's, oh, is that who you're going to take? That dang. is not who I was going to take. Okay. Okay. That, that is I, not. She's she's starting to play a little better, and you know she's she's done well here before, and she comes from a a family of pro athletes. I just think uh, you know, and another American. I just uh, I don't know. That was the that was the dark horse I was eyeing. Let's see. Uh, like I said, she's made the semis here before, so see what she's got this year. I like that one. And rounding third, coming home, I will take the girl that was born yesterday. 15 year old Brenda Frutova. <laughs> is she the how... sister of Linda, by the way? Yes. Okay. 
15 years old, I don't even know what I was doing at 15 years old. I think I was probably taking biology class in freshman year of high school. And this girl is playing in the Aussie Open. That, like, that's pretty crazy. But 15 years old, one of the top players in the world, and she is fun to watch. I, I, I got to take Brenda Fruvitova. I've been watching her, I feel like since she was like 14, I've seen her, 13. It's been, I'm like, it's getting, it's getting out of hand. I thought Coco was young watching her at 15. And I remember the first time I heard about her was over a year ago. And now she's finally made it to one of the big stages. It's going to be fun to watch. And I mean, at 15, to walk out there is a grand slam in the main draw. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And you know what? With siblings that are pro tennis players together, a lot of times the younger sibling ends up, uh, yep ends up doing better. I mean, obviously Serena <laughs> is probably the prime example, but then uh, who else? Zverev? Zverev. Yep. Uh... yep. So yeah, Andy, you know, your, your Andy, older Andy siblings Murray. can motivate you. Andy Murray. Andy Murray. Yeah, there's not, yeah, that's another good one. <laughs> you always want to beat the older sibling at something, right? What, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's younger, but Petrus Sitsipas, I mean, don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on him. <laughs> Sitsipas said he, nobody works harder on his game nobody than loves, Petrus. Nobody loves tennis more than Petrus. <laughs> that's right so we'll see Ooh, all right let me just recap our uh our teams here madison in top 10 has Ans jabur in netflix paula bedosa past champions elise mertens the field madison keys and wildcard qualifier taylor townsend i have for netflix sviantec coco goff top 10 danielle collins in the field krejcikova in past champions and Coco Vandeway in wildcard qualifier. And Nate has Sabalenka Netflix, JPEG Jess Pagula, top 10, Vika Azarenka, past champions, Belinda Bencic in the field, and Fru Vertova, the younger sibling in qualifier. <laughs> Sorry, what's her first name? Brenda. Brenda, okay. Brenda. Yeah, I just, I, I've been looking at the draws all week, just saying, seeing B Fru Vertova. And, yep. uh, and I guess <laughs> I just, yeah, didn't click in to see the full name. So, <laughs> There you go. Ooh, how, how you I was feeling? Fun. I like the way we did this, and we're gonna no. We, 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 uh, I'll be keeping track of these. I send me this. <laughs> send me this document so I can see where we're, where I, where I rank. Yeah, we definitely will, and we'll put a link to it in the podcast article, so anybody curious can uh, can check it out, and we'll uh, make sure to keep this updated with tallies. Who's uh, who's winning as we go along in the Australian Open? We'll be doing another podcast, so we'll make sure to update you guys on that as well and on the uh, score dinner in miami on the line <laughs> as well as potential <laughs> tennis point gift cards so. I, I already got my spot picked out for when i win man i already <laughs> that's too funny we were gonna ask nate to comment on the uh fall championships for the ncaa's the individuals moving to the fall 2024 we'll get to it another time i think all right guys appreciate you guys for having me yeah, thanks for joining me, and uh, thanks to everyone for listening to episode two of the Tennis One podcast. We'll uh, we'll be back next week to talk more Australian Open and any other headlines going on. Thanks again, guys. Thanks everybody. Okay.